Kia ora, Fina. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you again. Eh? It's been a wee while. Yeah, about 18 months, I think. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I'm looking forward to this. So keen to hear how you've been uh, going and what you've been up to. Um, so let me just give you a quick, quick introduction um, and just give you, an, uh, you know, a sense of the flow. Uh, so in here, we have quite a broad range, um, unlike the cohort that you're in. We have 18 different countries. So the challenge with that is when you use the reo, uh, our Māori language, um, which is all cool, but just got to convert afterwards, so translate so that other people understand because they're not from Te Ao Māori, the Māori world. And so that's an important thing. Um, also, we have a, w quite a wide range of people from um, you know, business experience. Yeah, quite a broad range, either they're new to um, e-commerce or business uh, like you were, and then so they're really interested in what you're saying to those at the other end. So they've been in e-commerce and they're just learning more advanced techniques. So quite a broad range. So what I'll do is um, when we have a kōrero or a talk, I'll help to translate. So if I see something that is um, jargon that they don't won't understand, I'll, I'll jump in the hui and um, just convert for them. Um, yeah, and the general conversation talks, we started talking about our limiting beliefs because as you know, we're big on um, the mindset side of things here. Uh, and then we'll talk about um, your cultural context, because we have different um, indigenous uh, nations here. So giving them an understanding of where you're from and your people and some of your cultural beliefs. Uh, and then we'll move into the business side of things. How does that sound? Sounds good. Man. Hey, so uh, welcome back. I gave uh, Afina an introduction. Do you want to just... Mahi to everyone, uh, uh, you know, introduce yourself to everyone, Afina. Uh, tēnā kata katoa, ko Afina muri paenga tōku ingoa, uh, he uri ahau, uh, no te hiku o te ika a Maui, uh, he mama, he kaiako, uh, he kaipake he Maori hoki ahau. Uh, kia ora everybody, my name is Afina, um, I'm the creative director and founder of Fatu Creative. Uh, we just celebrated our second birthday uh, this week, and uh, 18 months ago, on week three of Kahau Ite Ao, I launched um, the Tuku Tuku Toy Kit, uh, which is a product that teaches uh, one of our Māori art forms, but in a modern, contemporary way, um, and what was sort of started out as a a craft kit is more so a storytelling kit and um, helps people through mental health and um, yeah a lot of our social services are using them in different ways um, yeah and I'm also a mum I just finished my teaching degree uh, last year while running my pakehi and yeah I'm born and bred and uh, so yeah my iwi my tribes are Ngāti Kuri, Te Rarawa, Ngāti Kahu and Ngāpuhi which are all in the far north the very top of Aotearoa New Zealand um, and when I launched my business and um, and my product I was actually living uh, in the far north as well uh, but I've just moved back to Auckland where I was actually born and raised. And so I think what's important to share first is that I was, um, Te Reo Māori is my first language. So I was born um, through going to total immersion, early childhood school, primary school, all in Te Reo Māori. Um, I grew up in the city on Pan Tribal Marae, which are like an urban cultural centre, uh, which was a response to the urban drift. So the urban drift is when um, all our, our grandparents, great grandparents moved to the city for employment. Um, and so they left behind their land, their culture, their language. Um, and so when I was born in the late 80s, um, I was born to parents who weren't as strongly connected to their um, traditional homeland. And so they set out to raise their children um, in their language, in their culture. And so I'll be honest, I had no idea that most Māori children um, didn't grow up like I did um, in their culture 
in their language. Um, so we were kind of raised in the safe haven in the middle of the city. And in Auckland, it is a huge melting pot of cultures. So not only did I grow up um, strongly in my own culture, but I was surrounded by many other cultures, um, which I think um, has made me um, really open-minded. And, um, and I know that um, in the mahi that I do, that this kit has helped to bring our cultures together um, through weaving and our traditional patterns. Um, and then anyway, I work, went to um, a mainstream high school and then I went to university and no matter where I went throughout my entire life, I lived at the marae. Um, every place had a marae. I would gravitate towards the marae. I would meet other mainly Māori people near the marae. And um, I used to work in the film industry actually back then. And then um, I, I was 25. I was worked in the film industry for nine years and I just had enough. Um, so I just gave that up to pursue the arts. And at the same time, I was asked to run an art gallery at my marae in Ahipara, which is uh, in the far north, 90 mile beach. And um, yeah, so I just did that for, I volunteered basically. Um, and they gave me a shelter, they fed me and um, they gave me all their knowledge. And um, by running this art gallery, this is pre-COVID, it was mainly tourists who came to our art gallery in the far north because we were on the Te Araroa Trail, which is one of the great walks. Um, and so I would welcome them into our space, share a little bit of our culture. And um, more often than not, I would sell them one of our traditionally made kiti or um, little um, brooches and painted rocks and all sorts of Māori made products. And what I realized, um, I was really good at selling them, but I couldn't get my weavers to replace that stock item as quickly as I could sell it. And these were the first couple of years that I was like, you know, I could notice the trend, it's easy as to sell it, but the weavers, they weave in their own time, they're retired, they often raise their grandchildren and do community work and things like that. Um, and I think that was probably one of the early um, innovations that went through my mind in terms of how can we um, promote our traditional knowledge, how can we teach our traditional knowledge without the, um, the, the laborious work that it takes to weave things by hand. And um, I actually had quite a few goes at this over the last decade with different little items like a woven necklace, a woven mobile. Um, and then, yeah, in 2021, I was received two creative in schools projects, which is a Ministry of Education funded project. And um, I made this course called Tukuatu Tukumai. And um, I taught kids our traditional patterns and they made these amazing tukutuku and I, literally chucked it in a box and sold a lot really fast. Well done, eh? Nice. There's a lot in there. There's a lot in there to um, unpack and, and get, go deeper. So if I just summarise, um, your background was in sort of education, teaching and film industry. And then you moved home to your um lands so your, your country for the australians and your country is in the top of the north island of new zealand right it's up those ways for you to get a geographic um coverage of where you're from and then when doing that you were exposed to more to our cultural crafts and art and i just want to share right can you just bring up and share um uh afina's website what I'll do is I'll put up in this website and then we can just show people. So I think it's important to understand what the, the product is. And the reason why I feel is we have quite a few artists on here, but they have different, you know, they're from their um, indigenous nations from around the world doing art. So we'll put the, that into the, the chat. Let me just do that right now. Boom. There's an example. Um, and then we'll bring up the web, um, Afina's website so you can see it. It's, it's a, a type of weaving, if I'm correct. And um, you weaving, and the interesting thing is you 
which I think is a, a really amazing and really smart move, was you you didn't sell the like a, a piece one piece of art, you sold a kit, and in, in that kit is uh, sort of like do it yourself or at home, and where you can um, people, including from uh, Maori as well as non Maori, can practice your craft. So in one way you're you're revitalizing our our, um, our tribal uh, culture. Um, but by making it more accessible for others to practice that, and then they would create their create their own art at home with their, their kids, for example, and then that's essentially what you sell is this kit of um, home craft. I think it's really smart and really did well for you, and still we're doing well. And, and um, yeah, is that a good summary of, of where we got to, Alfina? Yes. Yeah. So. Um... I think, yeah, what's um, quite hard for us as artists is to um, regularly make work. Um, a lot of us usually have other um, ways of making uh, income. And so I think what's unique is that, yeah, I don't make any of the art, but I give all the patterns. And I think what one thing that I've done um, that's really helped is that I've given more than one pattern. And so original series gave three, and then last year we released another set with another three. And so I have a real high return customer rate because mm -hmm. they see not only just one pattern in the booklet, there's three there, um, and then they see other people make the other three. And then I've also just made a video how to teach you to make your own custom design because I don't come from every tribe. I only come from the top tribes and I don't want to make your design, but I want to teach you how you can make your own design. And so not only have I made it quite addictive, um, but I keep feeding that addiction with new patterns, new colorways, um, and new ways to um, tell your story yeah, through the same product. So it's just a pegboard, um, string, and a, and a little pin tool. Hey, let's just, um, Rachel, have you got Afina's site so we can and share screen so that um, everyone can get it? I think it's really important to look at the products that she's selling. So just give you this quickly, Afina will show this, and then this will be out at, Okay, just talk us through what we're seeing here, what the students are seeing here. This is your website, right? It's... Yes, I have a very basic website that I've had since I launched in uh, October yeah. 2021. Um, it converts, so I just haven't changed Excellent. anything. Excellent. Um, Excellent. So this is our label. So just behind me are all our boxes. Um, all the kits are the same. They just have different colored strings. So each color represents um, a part of nature, the tile, so the blue is for the water, um, green so is for the marketing, right, the bush. Let's just have a look at the product, go down to the photos, I think it's important. Yeah, keep going down. Yeah, because everyone won't be familiar. And then with this is the, the end product, so this is what yeah, you can so. make. And that's weaving, eh? It's a piece of, it's a board with holes in it, and then you weave the patterns and you fed the thread. Yeah, so it's like a um, cross stitch uh, yeah. board. And that's sort of oh, the yeah. back. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. And awesome. uh, so, yeah, it's a contemporary version. Um, yeah. And so we sort of see our product as a way, as an introduction into Māori weaving. So um, it nice. sort of plants an idea of the meaning of the patterns and then um, a lot of people are now returning to their own marae or to their own um, areas stop stop uh, to um, gather traditional resources i love that i love that i just really want to get people familiar with your, your product because you're just doing such an amazing job see in that package that photo there that's what you get in the kit right it's the book that talks someone through um, and the, all, everything that you need to make that pr product, to, to make that piece of art, that's what you get, eh? Yeah. And, the, and I heard something, as you said, something amazing, which you didn't know, didn't realize at that time when we were training with you, is um, you have high repeat customers. Now, I'll just explain that for many of the students here. That means lifetime value of the customer. Remember, that's what we were talking about. Lifetime value of the customer means how many times in one year does a customer purchase from you 
and one of the most important business metrics, like you can measure many things in business, but one of the most important metrics is lifetime value of the customer. And the goal is to get them, if they purchase off you one per year, you want to, how do you, you have to think of ways to come up with, how can I get them to purchase off twice? And what Afina is saying is she has customers that purchase off her more than once. So probably what's the average amount that they're purchasing off you in a year? Is it two or three? Uh, maybe even four or five. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, no, they're quite addicted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so... Um, and then because I've just started this year to play with sales strategies and man do they love a good sale like they're fully <laughs> stockpiling knowing that the price is good yeah, um, I love it. yeah and then they spend more it's, it's quite <laughs> fascinating I've oh, only just learned this in the last month or two like I'm learning about sales strategies and um, yeah like yeah when you reduce the <laughs> what the sale price they spend probably double what they would normally have yeah. spent it's quite fascinating yeah let's just hold on that because that is we teach them um we've evolved the program every year we we tweak and we learn from the last cohort and we go what do we need to improve one of those things is what you're describing is called the average order value the average order value for those out, out there that don't remember is when they come and purchase off you the goal is um how do, can i get them to purchase more when they're coming that one purchase time. And, you know, so what Afina is talking about is when you do a sale, that's one way to stimulate them to purchasing more, even though they're getting reduced down overall, they're buying rather than one thing, they're buying two things or three things or four things or five things. So average order value is what Afina is talking about. It's a, just making the kōrero, the talk relevant to the students learning. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, Oh, that's amazing, man, that they repeat purchase the lifetime value of the customer. What did you do to, to achieve that? Like, what what tactic? How did you get it? Is it is it because you uh, um, put stuff in the book or give them further examples of what they could make? Or what, how did you, what did you do there? Uh, well, yeah, probably one thing I use re really hard is the customer avatar. So I could... Um, from these customers, from engaging with them on social media, I started to see patterns um, with them. I would also give them little um, discounts for reviews. Um, you know, I just start like they would send it to me, and I'd say, "Oh, well, I'll put it through here, and I'll get you know um, through our review app, and um, I'll send you a discount." But I was just like getting to know them, and um, yeah, just getting re really um, to know my customer, and then also tailoring all my um, stories and content around that. And so the main customer avatar for Fata Creative is a um, full-time Māori mama, high professional, time poor, trying to find um, authentic ways to spend um, quality Māori experiences with their often tamariki. And- um, Children, children, tamariki. Yeah, with their children. children. And yep. um, so, yeah, and then also that social proof. So. Um, we showed from the beginning um, how every process went developing the toy kit, um, selling out. We sold out in one hour on yeah. a Google form on launch. And um, yeah, we literally oh, showed awesome. everything. And so awesome. like people were buying into the Fatu brand and the Fatu story. But then they would also help me decide what to make next what color themes so you know I was trying to like have a little bit of buy-in from them you know when I would engage with them like what things they would like like we didn't have minis to start with um but then they were the mums were like getting hooked on the big one didn't want to give it to their kids so they were like oh can you do it like midnight for the kids and then I was like I had this waste product um because I was getting cut at the time and so our original minis were made from the waste product of uh, making our A3, oh, our bigger boards. So cool. um, and so, yeah, we were making wait, money wait. off what was almost going to go in the rubbish. And wait, then wait, we wait, 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 let's just unpack that one. So a mini, just for everyone listening, that's just a smaller version of your main product. And there was a, like, um, uh, you were making, you were cutting, your, when you were manufacturing. So this is such a smart move for all those that are manufacturing products is what can you do with your waste? Oh, wow. Show, show the camera. So it's like a coaster size almost. 
Yeah, and it's kind yeah, of small it's... enough that you can like redo, I reckon. I.e. another pattern. Oh wow. Well, oh, cool. So, so these so ones come with ones. like six patterns in the in the um in this because I want to give a beginner um a yeah. good broad um idea of what tuku tuku is and some of the yeah. meanings of the patterns. Yes. Yeah, wow, I love that. I love that you're very entrepreneurial thinking. Very entrepreneurial thinking to think outside the box. Here, you've got this waste. How did you come across that? Like, oh, I should use that waste product. Like, was it because it you're a customer customers. avatar? Yeah, there you go. Far, everyone listening here, all the students, she's listening to her customer avatar. Her customer avatar gave her the idea or the problem, the pain point. And just like some of the others that you've seen, Martin, um, uh, Nicola, or Kaha alumni, they all said the same thing. They spend more time asking their customer avatar, you know, what the problems they have. And then you, you had, but you, then you've got the creativity, right, to go, oh, I've got the idea, and then you made the mini. And then, um, and then they, because uh, we launched in October, November, so the school year was almost finished. But then at the beginning of the following year, 22, um, we were just getting out of COVID and then the bulk orders started. So I've sold quite a bit on Shopify, but I've sold about the same amount through my zero. And those are, um, so yeah, people were social services, DHBs, were starting to buy them after COVID as a tool to bring people together, um, to send to people in isolation for something to do. Um, all these crazy ideas that, you know, I had no idea would come oh, I love it. a board and a string yeah. and a pin. Wait, 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 wait. We have to unpack that for them as well. Like, that's amazing. So what you did is, because you, you went running into the gift season, right? Christmas is quarter four, the last three months of the year. Uh, October, November, December is generally the biggest uh, selling period. For most e-commerce, but you missed that. So you were thinking outside the box. I just caught the tail end, uh, the but tail yeah, end. and then we were in COVID. So for me, yeah, COVID yeah, was yeah. a blessing. People yes. were stuck at home with nothing to do and no way yeah. of getting to the marae. So yeah. it was just a prime tool and yeah. kit. And so yeah. then people were zooming together to like do their tuku yeah. tuku together. They were having oh, picnics cool. in Auckland when it was like post-COVID sort of Great season. Ideas, though, hey? And now they use it in group settings for nice. um, yeah, mental health, work, um, you know, PD, in schools, yeah. all sorts of, um, yeah, wicked coping. Let's unpack that a little bit. So you've got, you sell on e-commerce, but it's almost like you've got this bulk um, packages, which is what we, we call the wholesaling. It would be another approach to what, what you're doing. That's another label. For it. And so that's where you sell bulk numbers, like like uh, ten units or a bigger hundred units, like how yeah, many hundred? One hundred. Okay, far out. One hundred units at a time. So it's always good with e-commerce. E-commerce is part of the story, but how else can you sell it? How did you get onto that? Like, how did you? Was that just an idea, or some you get it from your customer avatar to go and sell bulk to? those yeah um, well, they've just come to us they've just yeah emailed us messaged us through our website um and yeah often we were just making it to order at that stage now yes. like i have it all as soon as it, um, all the materials arrive i package it all over a week yeah. with a whole yeah. crew and yeah. then um when did we do this in december and then Wait, we're just it? about to do it again which is uh, what are we in april um, and so we're almost doing like we've moved almost a year's worth of stock in half the amount of time. So that's what Woo! we're trying to do now is like move it quicker. And so I haven't actually officially wholesale. So I have all these stores waiting, but because I'm a perfectionist, uh, my stickers didn't come, come out perfect. And so I'm okay. getting the packaging redesigned and I know it's a little bit much, but um, you know, it, it works, you know? And so, yeah, we're just about to wholesale um and yeah i'm undecided whether we'll still sell through our own website or what but i'm open to see what happens you know in the next cool cool i just want to unpack that so you did your packaging so talk about because some students have packaging um, there at that stage what are you doing with your packaging like, how are you doing that are you uh, making, so just... manufacturing your packaging more short or are you making an Aotearoa in New Zealand? An Aotearoa stall. So I just get them from here in Auckland, um, quick brown box. And so I just use the closest box that could fit 
um, what we have. And um, we haven't changed the box in 18 months. Uh, but when we first launched uh, by Google Form, I didn't know that people would buy more than one. And so once we started packaging them, I was like, okay, how do you know which one is which color? And so I was a fast thinker. So I just got used um, dots to start with, like from the stationery store to differentiate the um, color themes. And then, so that's what we've done now, but um, because we do it by hand, um, they don't all line up as perfectly as I'd like. So because we've done so well over a long time, I can now afford to pay uh, packaging designers to overcome all those little shortcomings. So that when we are in a store that we're just a visible brand um, and that will stay the same look forever. Nice. Wow, I love that. Uh, but yeah, I just want to add also, you talked about like Christmas is like the prime uh, for e-commerce, but um, yes. we've just had Matariki come in as an official holiday, the Māori New Year. Yeah, and yeah. so that's like a huge market and time for me. I did a collab with Sky City last year. And so, yeah, for like, as a Pakehi Māori that sells a Māori product, um, yeah, I'm lucky that I have two like real big seasons because everyone's looking for Māori ways to celebrate the Māori New Year. And if you take away food and beverage and clothing, there isn't that many products left on the market. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're just that um, sort of tactile product that's bright and modern, uh, but with a cool Māori spin on it as well. Nice, I love that. I love that. So, wait, you had a collab. So, <clears throat> I've put two first thing, Pakihi for our people. What does Pakihi mean? Oh, it's the Maori word for business. Yeah, yeah. And then also, um, you spoke there about collab, so collaboration. And this is what I think a lot of your, the um, Kaho students have done post the program between each other. So, um, students like you should be meeting each other. Right, and then going, how can we self-promote each other to our audiences or to our followers, like in and help each other to do that? Like that's one of the gifts that um, of the program is the networks. So just take us through your collaboration. You mentioned an organisation. For well, some people here, they won't know who that is. Um, and then what what was that, and what did you do? Uh, so Sky City is a uh, it's a um, monument in Auckland City. It's like a the tallest tower and um there's a casino there as well and um, they have a te Rope maori which is a maori group for all the staff there and um, they brought me in to do a tukutuku workshop with them and then um it was sort of a month out from matariki and while i was there they asked if i would like to do something for matariki with them um and then they also the marketing team also brought me on to help them um, work with uh, them in terms of using Māori imagery in their learning and development uh, teams. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's sort of my first insight into the corporate sector. Um, they fully paid for everything and obviously my time and Rauwe <laughs> Mia's uh, resources as well. Um, and yeah, I got to be in the middle of Auckland with my product on display. Um, and all the yeah, traditional storytelling that goes with it. And yeah, it was like a 24 seven exhibition, like right outside of the Sky City, it never closes at night in this beautiful yeah. glass box. Um, yeah. And so yeah, that was a real cool moment for us. We were also like top 50 Māori product um, for Matariki last year. We had a couple of those. Um, we've also won heaps of awards. So like um, on Kahawatea, when I did it, they sort of really stress like networking and, so yeah, I've just like fully buddied up with people I like too, you know, and products I like as well. Um, and yeah, we've gotten to know each other um, over the last year or so. And then they've fully helped um, grow uh, my followers and we've collaborated in giveaways. Um, and then, you know, we look forward to seeing each other at different events because it's quite lonely when you're an entrepreneur packing out of your buddy by yourself out of your home. Um, so yeah, I've, I've really um, yeah made the most of networking, and that's led to um, m many um, huge opportunities for Fatu. Awesome! Well done to you. I mean, I'm so happy f to see you grow. Like, wow! And you do so many creative things, eh? Like, if you go back to the beginning, and then you think about you as the entrepreneur just starting out because you were new to e-commerce, like what? 
what were some of the limiting beliefs? You know, like as you go in, someone a belief is a limiting belief is someone has told you something, and you've believed it, and it's not necessarily true. And you believe that, and then you suddenly realize that oh, it's not true, and you've overcome that limiting belief. For example, some people have limiting, and the program have limiting beliefs that I'm um, uh, too old to learn e commerce. Or another limiting belief might be um, oh, I don't have enough money to do that thing, whatever the thing is. You know, those might be limiting beliefs. What would be, if you reflect back on that time, what would be a limiting belief that you had that prevented you from? being the best version of you, and then um, how do you overcome it? Because it's really important for students to hear that side as well. Uh, yeah, so that's probably the main thing I got out of Kahal. I was, um, I had some real strong limiting beliefs and fixed um, mindsets. And because I was a lover of learning and innovating and being an entrepreneur, I just didn't realize that I had these limiting beliefs. Like I just wasn't really aware that I had put all these roadblocks up for myself, like just myself. Um, but yeah, some of them really was because I'm really strong in my cultural values. Um, one of our main cultural values is manakitanga, it's to take care of people. And so one of the things that I used to think was that um, you know, to give the most, you know, you can't have the most, i.e. you couldn't be wealthy. You know, I used to think that um, I just need to make a little bit, just enough to survive, but I don't need to make this much because, you know, it's just like, you know, you want to be humble, you know, you don't want to be above all your whanaunga, um who aren't rising with you. And so I used to have, yeah, these crazy mindsets like um oh yeah I just want to own one house um um you know because I used to give uh, do a lot of things for no payment for a long time and I think because it's um, a traditional indigenous knowledge and we've been gifted these knowledges through our elders um you also sort of tell yourself that you cannot monetize it um you can't be making money off your culture and your ancestors and your resources and your land um and that is so not true you know yeah and so it was actually through kahao it all um the other belief changes particularly from other indigenous cultures when i heard um from like dalveen from um australia and from um turtle island um jennifer jennifer Jean, you know the, the narratives are all the same and it really um sank into me how much I was holding myself back um, because I was trying to be humble, which is such a crazy thing. And so now I have uh, a really different mindset in that um, I really want to build so much wealth that I can do all the um, creative projects that I want to do to revive our traditional culture, uh, bring it into the 21st century and uh, make it relevant for generations um, to come. Um, and yeah, I don't want to have to rely on just funding to do that. Um, that's something I've done for the last decade. And yeah, through my product, just my one product, the Tuku Tuku Toy Kit, um, I'm already on my way to um, achieving yeah, a lot of my goals. Awesome. Awesome to share that. Thank you for that, um, Afina. Um, look, now, as one of the things that we like to do is invite our students up, because it's great, us having a kōrero, I love hearing your stories, and you've got heaps of insights too, but we want you to, to interact with our students, right, and, and hear them asking whatever they've questioned or burning in their mind, uh, and then um, having a or a talk with them. Is it all right to do that? Yeah. Sweet. So uh, put your hand up if you want to ask a question. And uh, Athena, we've got this uh, thing now I introduced. It's called the Fozzy Bear. Fozzy Bear means if a student gets up and asks one of those uh, ridiculous questions that are wasting your time, they get the <laughs> off the screen. Fozzy Bear was, a, was on the Muppets. <laughs> when I was young. <laughs> I'm cheeky. <laughs> anyway, students, who put your hand up. Who's going to go first, Rach? Can you introduce someone up to us? I've been a question. Okay, so the next uh, question will be from Augustine. Augustine. Good, Augustine. Uh, 
kerana ke te katoto e te apu mania, kerana e afina me itaki mata no te tuatua teia e te pitiniti, which is business in Cook Island Māori. Sister, thank you so much. I really appreciate your story. It is so wonderful to see another vaine toa um, sharing her business. So, me itaki mata. Now, my question for you, sister, is, Knowing what you know now, what are three things that you would tell your younger self before you started Kahau? Cool question. Cool question. I just wish I had a go. Um, I just wish I, um, you know, what I did two years ago registering my business, it was probably about 15 years in the making, maybe. Um, and um, yeah, I just wish I had a go sooner. And um, it actually took my best friend to pass away from cancer for me to fully get over that um, that last hump. Uh, because, yeah, once I actually had a go, I did really well. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, because I just, I went to university, I studied all these things. But, man, it's actually just living life that is the best experience for being an entrepreneur. And you can learn everything on the way. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Augustine. We'll ask who's next. Um, the next one is Dale, right? Dale. Good or Dale. Hello, Dale. Um, okay. Hi. Sorry, I uh, Winia. Hello. Sorry. Um thank you so much for that. I can hear Travis's pride and excitement when he speaks to you, and it's just beautiful um and i don't know how these keep getting better these belief changes um and i do need to say that i think that's one of my greatest takeaways as well is the mindset so and particularly just being in touch with indigenous mob it's just just life-changing okay my question is as someone who is about to be two weeks away from being qualified as a teacher also do i actually do have two questions do you use your, are you teaching? Do you use your teaching degree in the stereotypical way? Like I can see many, many values of it in business, but I am curious as to whether you're, you're teaching. Uh, yes, uh, we're on school holidays at the moment and I'm about to start teaching in about nine days time. Um, I graduate next month. Um, so when I, um, actually invented the product. I was in two schools, um, two um, Indigenous Māori uh, speaking schools. Um, and so I had a real, um, you know, I could watch them have a go at my product and refine it before I had actually launched it. And um, so, yeah, I just, I could see all the, like, you know, if a kid can do it, I taught year five to eight. Um, then I knew adults could do it and um, yeah the, the kids just smashed it I sort of um, our program is just using our patterns to tell your story and after teaching them and then making their tukutuku they were literally writing um, making tukutuku about climate change about the river about the stars about the Maori new year um, you know that's just spending about five weeks with them and so I could see quickly see the impact of um our product on on our students and um so yeah i've just finished my teaching de degree and yeah i started in a couple of weeks um yeah teaching at a um at a kurakopi for maori which is a yeah, um indigenous maori the one beautiful. i went to. oh beautiful congratulations um i love it and i do resonate a lot with what you're doing in trying to immerse culture um particularly for those that may not be exposed to it um and that brings on my second question being so i'm aboriginal um and that is the culture that i'm trying to embed and immerse people in um sorry yeah um, not monetizing our culture that was given to us by our ancestors. How how do you go with those? Um, how do you go with justifying to yourself that it's okay? Because I do have quite a lot of fear, particularly 
I wasn't brought up in the most traditional way, but it doesn't change my passion from it, particularly as I learned that those that were traditional in my culture are very early in their own journey because the knowledge is so fresh. It doesn't exist for us to know about our culture. It existed for their purpose of taking that recording at that time. So how do you go about not, offending your people or not being i don't know criticized about no, i totally know what you're Good trying history. to say sorry uh, so yeah when i moved home uh, to my tribal lands um i i still run a, a art gallery on our marae on our cultural center and it's not a common thing not many marae have an art gallery and uh so when um our gallery is mainly around weaving and my first job when I got there was to set up the National Weavers Conference, which um, 250 weavers from all over New Zealand, some travel from overseas as well, um, come together for four days straight to weave. And when I was hosting that event, um, sort of outside looking in because I was organizing the background, I noticed that all these weavers, about 95% of them didn't have the language. So they were some of our um, key exponents of reviving our culture in terms of weaving. You know, they had some of our most oldest knowledge in their hands, but yeah. they had no way of talking about it in our traditional tongue. And so when I noticed that, and I knew that I grew up uh, with um, Māori being my first language, I knew that my way that I could contribute to um, reviving weaving practices is through the language. And so when we would run all our workshops, we started to bring the language back with it. Um, because, yeah, there's many courses online in the community, but not many that teach the traditional words um, that go with it. And so for us in the far north and the top tribes, we even have our own dialect. And so it's just bringing back the words that relate to our resources and our techniques. And so one thing that I um, I remember Dalveen talking about as well, but when before I launched the Tukutuku Toikit, I actually did a little road trip to all the um, master weavers of my region um, to show them my product um, and um, spend time with them and not all of them were like ecstatic about it you know they're just they come from a different generation it's a super modern version of our traditional weaving uh, but once they sat with it and took time to see the booklet and what it was and what I was trying to achieve um, they gave their full blessing and um, that sort of carried me through the last 18 months, I've had, had next to no, um, no one question um, my right to sell this weaving. Um, it's all like 99% just grateful that um, I've bought such a product out that gives them an opportunity to, um, to connect to their culture as well. Beautiful, thank you. That is another thing that I have gotten from Kahal is, you know, sharing your why and your passion is helping people to see that insight a bit more. Thank you so much for sharing your story today and for the answers. Welcome. Sure, Dale. Thank you. Okay, Who's the next, next question will be from Tiffany. Oh, hello, Alina. Thank you so much for sharing your amazing journey with us. Um, now, you may have already covered this, but my mic was a little bit funny at the start. I was interested when you started to scale up and you wanted to source your weaving materials, uh, <clears throat> what process did you go through to make sure that you were getting uh, the materials that you were really happy with? And, um, you know, did you go over overseas to source your materials or did you keep it local and, you know, did you get it right the first time or did you have to try going to a few different suppliers? <laughs> I just know that must be a, a big process and I think probably people might have a few limiting beliefs around that. I know I would myself, you know, maybe that's too hard. And, yeah, I'm just interested to how you navigated that process. Good question. Uh, yeah, so I had um, two creative and schools projects. So they give you... 
$17,000 per school to teach an art form to um, students. And so I got to use those projects to find my materials. So um, I was researching for my product long before the product was invented or, you know, so a lot of the like um, research and development costs were done through this project that I was doing in schools. Um, I didn't know at the time that I would turn it into a product about six months later. Uh, but yeah, I just found it in our local emporium, tried to find it in bulk in New Zealand, it didn't exist. And so I just looked online on Alibaba and um, yeah, there's millions of options. And yeah, next month I get to go and meet my suppliers for the first time um, in Hong Kong, China. So wow. really looking so forward to that, yeah. So most of your communication with them was really just by um, email, I imagine, and, you know, communicating maybe by phone and then they send samples through. Uh, I just didn't have time for samples. So I just took the risk and um, oh, luckily great. it's um, been okay so far. So we manufactured our product and it was like a quite restricted time for our region. And yep. so um, we used to get them uh, by like on a whole reel. Um, and then we used to unroll it in our marae, which was like our cultural center because you couldn't hire buildings then. Um, and then we would like un unbundle it um, into bundles of four out of one reel. Um, and now it all arrives all fully done in different colors for different size products. And um, But what I like is that all those long ways, I can justify the cost of things now. Like I know that's a great price because we've done every single element um, by hand. <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Who's next? The next question will be from Auntie Dale. Uh, hey, thanks very much for sharing all that. I really enjoyed it. Got me all inspired and into a whole range of new things. Thoughts. So one of the things I wanted to ask was, is it patented, your design? And I presume your um, artists are licensed to give you the pattern or are they your, your designs? Uh, so, uh, yes, it is trademarked. The Tuku Tuku Toy Kit and Fatu Creative are both trademarked. Um, yeah, a month after I launched, I was lucky to win a $5,000 business grant. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was enough for me to say, oh, okay, I might put that on trademarking. Um, and yeah, it took a year for that process. Uh, but in New Zealand, you can't, uh, trademark patent, uh, traditional Māori knowledge. Um, it goes to a Māori advisory board who then overlook your application. Uh, but yeah, in short, you can't um, trademark traditional Māori knowledge. But what I've trademarked is my tuku tuku toy kit, which is the board, the string, the pin, and the designs that come in a set, a kit. Okay. Um, and so all the designs, so no one owns these designs. These are all traditional designs that are seen in our meeting houses. So I couldn't trademark them even if I wanted to. Um, I probably could to the dimensions of my board, but each trademark costs. So I just went for my brand and the overall kit. Um, and I'm currently going through the process of my first um copycat or whatever the word is so um we'll see how that all goes and how much that costs and all of that cool thank you very much you just said earlier that you know you went to um talk with your elders and that about the design and what you were creating if they'd said no would you have pursued it yes yeah yeah if they had said no i would have been like okay sweet all good <laughs> what about my other idea? I want to show them, show them the other ideas. Because, yeah, so um, when I launched, uh, registered two years ago this week, I did like a brainstorm on Coggle. Essentially, that was my business plan. Um, and the Tuku Tuku Toy Kit was actually my fourth product idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I went with that one because it was the most viable. So once I was 
calculating the packaging string board etc it had the best return um for investment compared to every other product the other products were cheaper but they weren't going to give me as much wow. of a margin you know it wasn't going to be viable um yeah. and so yeah the tuku tuku was actually my fourth idea and um it has been the most winning idea because i've stuck with the same one and um, that's probably worked in our favor just sticking with one it's easier to drive your brand and your storyline it's the same product just in different sizes and colors yeah yeah perfect right thank you awesome thanks Dale. any more questions we've got time for Maybe one more. Right, says any more. Oh, okay. The next question will be from Taimania. Tēnā koe, tēnā koe āwhinae mihi kauatu ana kia koe i o mahiranga si rarawatu. Um, kia ora afi. I'd like to ask you how important collaborating with other professionals is to your Pākehi, in particular individuals who have a different skill set to you, however, people that you've needed to align in order to um, experience the success that you have? Um, great pātai e hoa. So um, Taimania actually was a real huge reason. Um, um, Fatu Creative has done so well. So she's uh, works for an accountant. I showed her my numbers she spelt it out to me in real terms um and um yeah she set the price to make it profitable so thanks ty i really appreciate that uh but anyway as for professionals so i've done really well by wearing many hats myself you know running the shopify packing myself running my own social media content uh, but I've tried to outsource things like marketing um, I have an accountant I have a lawyer um, and it's come with some hard lessons so you know I've chose to hire friends and they haven't eventuated very, well they haven't done their job and then they don't answer your messages and um that's the reality of business Fano. and uh but luckily and one it happened twice to me last year and i don't share this on my social media because i don't really want to anyway uh but anyway out of one of those situations i found a project manager and he has uh, been really great with the numbers and um making me understand all the numbers and pretty much lining me up for an investor so that's sort of the next six to 12 month plan is to um, take on some putia from some organization or person or multiple um, and um, grow a team of people that can grow fatu and release all the other products that um, i've wanted to over the last couple of years Good question. Good answer. Afina, amazing. Wow. The, the chat, I can see the chat's running hot. Fucking, everyone loves the kōrero and, and the talk and uh, are learning a lot. So, you know, thank you very much for coming along and sharing everything um, with us. Um, if there's one last piece of advice that you would give to cultural artists. So that's an artist. What would be that one piece of advice that's learning, considering e-commerce, what would be your advice to them? I would really study this product. Um, I think the concept can translate to any art form, especially Indigenous art forms. Um, and so the concept is the materials, the instructions in a package that's easily accessible to people. That is simply it. And uh, what I thought was a craft kit has grown to be a um, storytelling kit, uh, a way of healing, a way of resting, and all these other um, ways. And so probably another thing that I've done is made it real open-ended. You know, if you were to look at a European craft kit, it's one pattern, one way, and there's no, there's no room to vary it 
um, to go off that pattern. And like, so you would have thought that that's not a very clever thing. But then what I learned was my return customer rate was huge because it was open-ended. They could make another design. They could make their own design in any number of colors. And so that's sort of the way in terms of like bringing your cultural values into your product is like, how can you make it, um, you know, because yeah, the concept is the same as a traditional kit and that you'd have traditional materials with traditional dyes and all those things. Um, but you're literally, you can make any pattern, any design um, through the same materials. And so, yeah, I, I really want to share this with um, every Indigenous um, cultural art practitioner and um, use this as a way to hopefully build your own whānau wealth, but also the wealth of your people. Well done. Awesome, awesome answer. So everyone, uh, Rach, can you unmute everyone so everyone can um to Pucky Pucky, put your hands together and clap uh, for Afina. Thank you, Afina. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 So the intention of this karakia is to bring the creation energy and get it to take flight in a way that guides us in our integrity and allows us to focus and bring success to our community and to bring us together, gather us together and bind us together. And it's my first time to do this one. Tukuna te wairua, ki arere ki te taumata, ko te matatika, Te mata pono, hei arehi i ngā mahi, ka arotahi te tira ki a i ki panuku, ki a i ki tangaroa. Haumie, huie, taikie. Taikie. Amen. Taikie. Awesome. Well done, everyone. We'll see you uh, same bat channel, same uh, place next week. Next week we've got... Um, that's a big workshop. Uh, so next week, I saw a question around the belief changes. No, we won't have belief changes because we're going to spend most of that time at helping you guys. Uh, so there'll be a workshop with Zan and I, um, and uh, we'll be doing our best to help you on that launch that you guys are now heading into. So we'll look forward to seeing you guys. Same place, same bat channel. Live long and prosper.